Hello, everyone, and welcome to American Family Insurance Dream Bank, where we believe in the transformative power of dreams. I'm Madeline, a senior dream curator here at Dream Bank, and on behalf of our team, we're thrilled to have you with us. Here at American Family Insurance, we believe communities are stronger and the future is brighter when people are actively pursuing their dreams. That's why we created Dream Bank, an inspirational community destination and digital experience dedicated to dreamers everywhere. From our daily event series to immersive signature programs, there's something for every dreamer. Our offerings are designed to help you celebrate your dream journey, overcome obstacles, and stay motivated. Now I'd like to introduce you to today's speaker. Lindsay Salzweedle creates experiences for kids and adults to decompress and express with art. She makes it tangible to carve out time to create something both beautiful and meaningful with paint kits. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us and we'll let you take it from here. Hi everybody, welcome and a uh, happy um, winter season. And it's a great time to carve out some space in your home to uh, get a little, a little messy and um, carve out some space for some self-care. Um, so we are gonna do just that. So for the next half hour, we're gonna go through not just, two, not just two, but four techniques. So it's a bonus day. And uh, we're gonna go through a process that uh, is all about abstraction and all about just feeling and incorporating the intuition that we need to follow every day that often gets um, kind of stuck um, and we don't follow it. So we're gonna take um, a little bit of time with the supplies you have. Um, I do have um, three colors that I hope that you, you would have in front of you and a surface. So we are going to spend just a few moments preparing our work surface for um, some meditative abstract art making. So first, you are going to need a pan of some sort. It can be an aluminum pan from your house. I say it's always better if you line it with some aluminum foil. And that will actually allow you to, um, as you can see, I have an aluminum pan, a disposable one, but you just need something that will catch the paint. Um, you will see I have um, a work surface. Um, it's a wood panel. I'm actually reusing it. So it's really an opportunity for you to cover something because it's all about thick paint. Um, over here, I have um, some disposable gloves. I do have a table covering to protect my um, work surface. And I do have a little cup. So it can be just an old condiment cup or an old cup from your um, kitchen. And I, also, I have a stick and it can be a pen, an old pen, something you can kind of stir it, stir it up. Um, it's just a great tool. Um, lastly, um, paper towels is always a wonderful thing for um, wiping your hands in between. So um, once you have your paint, again, three colors, your work pan your, um, and your paint surface, um, along with just any protective gear, I have my an apron on. You can just wear an old shirt. So again, um, preparing your surface is a step number one for creativity. Um, number two is I like to set the tone. So when we do an activity um, in studio, um, when I do classes, I think preparing the mind is just as important as preparing the body and the, and the physical at atmosphere. So we're just gonna take a moment and I am going to get us into a mindset of gratitude, of um, awareness, of just being thankful for winter and in all the beauty that comes with the cold. Um, so I'm gonna read a poem by Joseph T. Renaldi. And um, I want you to close your eyes Relax your shoulders, relax your butt in your seat or if you're standing like myself. And I just want you to take a couple deep breaths. In and out with your mouth. All right, the tension has melted and um, I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Winter wonderland, there are strange and mysterious sounds. When the winds of winter blow, the long nights are crystal clear and cold and the fields and meadows are covered with snow. The stars are frosty against the sky and the wind's whistle is shrill as the snow blows against the house and drifts against the hill. Yet I like to see during the winter a white carpet on the ground to plowed aimlessly in the deep snow where deer tracks abound. I like to feel the stillness of a crisp winter's night, 
watching a full moon rise over the horizon, exposing a winter wonderland, beautiful and bright. So winter wonderland is um, the theme of today's acrylic paint pouring. It's a seasonal addition and um, we are gonna be incorporating um, a little bit of mixed media. If you do have some glitter, it's not necessary, but it just kind of adds to the magical seasonal um, feel of winter. So I'm gonna um, kind of go through. Um, we set our tone, we set up our physical um, environment. Now we are going to, go, I'm gonna go through the four techniques. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna listen. If you'd like to jot down some notes, um, I'm gonna be instructing on the four and I, um, with my mini canvases. And then what I would entice you to do is just pause and take in. Take in the magic, watch the colors swirl on, in front of you on screen, and then decide which of the four that you wanna do if you're only limited to resources for one project. So it allows you to really take in what technique is gonna be best suitable for you and what it looks like and what you most desire. And then we're gonna work out some time to um, share um, in finding out what one expresses what you feel about the winter wonderland and all the beauty um, that winter has to offer in the reflective season of the cold. All right, I'm gonna switch my screen so I can show the first technique. The first technique is a technique I called as spilled milk. It requires you to take one cup of paint at a time and pour it on one part of the canvas. So what's beautiful about this technique is it creates lines. It's very linear. Some people are very linear. And I am just going to be putting it out and I'm just gonna go like this. It's very spontaneous and free, but the point of the spilled milk is literally like if you were gonna take the gallon of milk and you poured the chocolate milk on the floor, which I have done, um, and uh, what it would be like is just like the beauty of it kind of splattered a little bit. So I want you to think about that as that, okay? And then I'm taking again my second color, splatting it, like I dropped it right on the kitchen floor. And then um, that third color, and if you have more, I'm going to probably do a couple more. I picked colors that were reminiscent of winter, um, the cold colors like purple and blue. Um, I didn't choose green, even though um, it is also a cool color, just because it reminds me of spring and we don't see any green. So um, I did put a couple metallics. If you have some metallics, you can include that. Again, some spilled milk. It doesn't have to be in a perfect blab. So, the point is, is that you have enough paint that you can cover the front of the um, work surface. So again, spilled milk, you're spilling the, the three, at least three containers of, um, or the partial containers of the paint onto the front of the surface. And you're gonna be manipulating those splats on the, the work surface to make it into a beautiful linear kind of colors inter, interlocking and moving. So again, I want you to take in and maybe relax your shoulders again and watch how the colors change. And I want you to take in this technique of spilled milk. And then you can decide if it would be something that you want to explore at the end. So one of the tech pro tips of acrylic paint pouring is you have to be aware. And you have to be aware of looking and observing all angles because the paint will move and shift. And so you have to kind of go with it and you don't want all of it to be dripping down and you're losing it from the front of the surface because if you're not paying attention, that is what will happen. And you'll lose that nice thick look. So I don't want to lose all that gold. So I'm going to move it and force it down and let gravity force it down. And again, I like to, I'm a very tactile person. Um, I like to move it with my hands. Again, um, I don't mind getting dirty. Some people do. And so I can shift it in my pan a little bit so you can see it. And I can shift it this way. And uh, the goal is to make sure that front of the canvas is covered. So, all right. So I'm going to show you up close what it looks like. So you can see I have a little bit of um, the spilling, kind of the angles and the linear quality of it, almost looks like something that you would see at a 
contemporary art museum, such as the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art right on State Street. So that is the first, it is called Spilled Milk. We're gonna go to the second. So the second canvas is going to be um, called The Dirty Pour. It's exactly how it sounds. Um, you are going to take one cup and plop it on one color at a time uh, over the other. So you're just gonna be plopping. So you're gonna layer with select colors in one cup by plopping the colors. So instead of working on the canvas directly, we're using another container. And so I'm gonna be taking my colors and just plopping them right into that, that condiment cup that you might have, or recyclable cup works, and I'm just plopping them in. The pink is under the purple, plopping the blue in, and I'm going to do my fourth color just because it's fun. Now you might say, well, I love pink. It reminds me of rosy cheeks because of the cold, um, and maybe I want to add more of that. Awesome, that means you just have more pink on your canvas. So I have a good amount and I'm going to literally make an S curve. An S curve is exactly what it sounds. I'm gonna make an S with the paint. I'm pouring it right on the canvas. So I'm gonna go from the right upper corner and working kind of in an S shape. And this is where the stick or some kind of utensil is helpful. You wanna get as much of that paint out of that container as possible. So we're not losing all that beautiful paint. Now, um, something to note, um, acrylic paint pouring is, is really optimally done with acrylic paint pouring specialty paint. Now, I know many of you have acrylic paint, which is definitely doable. You will probably need more of it to actually have it move, and you might actually have to be more patient to get the paint to, to swirl, um, as it naturally will, will kind of gum up a little bit, and so you have to work quickly. Again, I have my S, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate the surface until it covers the, um, the front of my work surface. So again, I'm using my hands and lifting it up because it makes it easier for you to see. And I want you to see how it's so cool, how it actually just kind of manipulates and mixes. It actually, it's called kind of a swirling and it will naturally kind of work the color underneath and start to take it as it blends. So again, really important that if you um, are not paying attention and you have a lot of it spilling off, that's just telling you that you need to just slow down and just relax, maybe take another deep breath. And um, I want you to just take in and that we're not going for perfection. I want you to show you, to show you that there are happy mistakes everywhere. Um, I think one of the best things, the invention process and the creation process is being able to utilize imperfection because it's so powerful. And so I want you to know here that I didn't spill enough paint on my work surface because I got distracted, um, easily distracted. And so I'm actually gonna have to pour more paint and that is okay. So I'm gonna take a moment and do the same thing, I'm plopping my colors in one cu my cup because I am gonna need more of it. All right. So I'm gonna put it over the top. Ooh, I love the purple. And it's interacting with my swirls of the gold and the pink. And I want that to shift. Now the creative process is just that. It doesn't have to look like mine. It's not supposed to be a certain way. But the dirty pour is probably the most unplanned of the techniques because you really have a hard time knowing what it's gonna really look like. A lot of times the colors just mix. So the beauty of it also is, is that if you like the white space, which I kinda do, you can leave it. Let it just interact with the white space. It kinda looks like a blanket of snow from the winter wonderland. So I'm gonna be okay with that. And I am just going to kinda let it be. And I'm gonna go on to the third technique. So the third technique is my favorite. Um, I'm gonna share an example I did. And this is um, the flip cup. And it's really kind of like um, a tornado. <laughs> it really is. As you can see, like it looked like the aftermath of everything blowing everywhere, maybe a winter um, storm or the, um, the wind and the salt and it's just kind of 
swirling into the air. That's what a little bit what it looks like and I love it. So for this example, we're gonna incorporate the glitter and I'm gonna do it small here so you can see how it's gonna work and how you can incorporate mixed media if you choose. All right, so for the flip cup pour, you obviously need another cup. So um, if you are, um, open to, all you have to do, like the dirty cup, is the layer the colors, kind of fl plopping the colors into the cup, and you're just doing it. You're not doing any fashion. Maybe you just kind of want to play with what layering might look like. Maybe you put a couple dots on one side, and the whole goal is to um, then get enough paint to cover the surface, and then you're going to flip it over directly, like literally magic. You probably think, how is this gonna work? You're gonna flip it over really quickly and you're going to just flip it over the, in the middle of your work surface. So you're gonna kind of whirl it and I'm going to put it in the middle. If it's not in the middle, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be a really cool, spontaneous, abstract, beautiful, relaxed design. You're gonna wait just a few moments until all the paint gets the time to trickle down from the, the cup to the work surface. And if you are impatient and you wanna speed up the process, you can tap the edges of your cup. All right, I'm gonna lift it up. Again, it will start oozing out because it's all contained. And I just want to hold up. So this is actually a, a really cool, it's one of my favorites um, technique for this reason. It's called cells. So if you, can you see how there's like little bubbles almost like, and there's cells where like colors are within and they're almost like um, air is captured. And so you have these like built-in bubbles and it's just a beautiful texture. So one of the cool things about doing um, the flip cup pour, you get more of the cells is what they're called. Um, okay, so again, just like the other prior two techniques, you're gonna manipulate the, the surface, whether you lift it up um, with your hands or you work it into your pay um, through and shift your tray and you're just going to move it back and forth. And I like to just move it to the top of the corner and then move it over to the top right corner. And what's cool about abstract art is that it can be viewed from all different angles. And so I would actually have you challenge yourself to look at it from different angles to see which way you think it looks best. And then you can hang it in your room or your office or maybe even give it to somebody um, by surprising them and hanging it in their office or room. So it can be viewed how you think it's best as the creator. So you might say, hey, like, what if I wanna manipulate it? What if I wanna do that? So because we're gonna kind of manipulate some other things, I'm actually, can actually take, I can take my stick and I can kind of move it around a little bit and manipulate it. You won't, it won't be as um, authentic, but it's okay. You're utilizing some mixed media in this one, if you choose. So I can actually kind of move it just slightly if I, if I really want it to cover and it's not covering. However, it's gonna look a little bit um, changed in texture and you just have to be okay with that. So, and if you're not, you can move the paint in the other direction and it'll, it'll like erase it. So you can't see that you touched it due to the thick paint. So I'm gonna just let it just ooze to the bottom. And I just want to read the last paragraph one more time of the Winter Wonderland. So you can just like pause and look into this piece. And I want you to really see the deer tracks. And I want you to really see the white carpet of um, snow. And I want you to really see the beauty in the design of watching it move. Yet, I like to see during the winter, a white carpet on the ground to plowed aimlessly in the deep snow where deer tracks abound. I like to feel the stillness of a crisp winter's night watching a full moon rise over the horizon, exposing a winter wonderland, beautiful and bright. All right, so 
I am very pleased at my piece. Again, I'm gonna look at it from different angles. And I hope that you will also do that practice, practice of changing perspective, looking at things differently by changing how you view it. All right, that swirl of the wind. All right, so on to the last technique. This is called the puddle pour. It is very orchestrated for those who were on here that like structure and like things kind of so you can control. Um, this is gonna be your technique most likely. All right, um, if you don't mind Maddie, um, I see that there's a hand raised. If um, you would um, go on screen and read her question, that would be helpful. Absolutely. Um, one person asked what the name was for the third um, paint pour. It is just the one we just got done doing. It's called a flip cup pour because of the nature of flipping it up in the middle of the canvas and having it all ooze down with gravity. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. All right. So last, lastly, we are going to, um, I'm going to demonstrate the puddle pour. We have done a clean pour, which is just about linear lines. We've done a dirty pour, which is literally um, very marbleized and, and all kind of mixed. And then um, thirdly, we did the flip cup pour. And then last is a puddle pour. And you'll know exactly what I mean by that. All the names are very illustrative to the technique. So um, we are going to be taking and we're going to make four circles blobs in the middle of the canvas or your work surface. And so you're going to be almost making a, a square with four blobs of circles. So I like to choose one color at a time as a base. So I'm choosing just some blobs. They don't have to be the same size necessarily, but you know, maybe close. Again, four blobs that are kind of in a circle shape in the middle of your work surface. If you are having a hard time getting the paint to kind of go down and trickle down, again, you can use that utensil to help you get as much out as possible. All right, so again, I told you that these are for, this technique is very natural for somebody that likes things controlled and likes to kind of know the process um, and have a process. Um, this one is, Circles within circles, concentric circles. So circle within circle, blobs, and they don't have to be the same color. So I want you to see, I want you to push you to kind of explore and they don't have to be the same color within the other color. So I'm gonna use purple for my third blob, change it up, and then I'll do my blue. And I'm gonna do a lot in this last one, just because I can. I wanna see what it looks like. And knowing that um, it's kind of ready shifting due to my uneven surface, work surface, I am going to shift it. And I am going to be very careful. Again, I want it to ultimately reach the corners and all the edges of my work surface. So I am going to shift it back and forth and down and back, like you're rocking a baby to sleep. There's something very relaxing about it, that constant back and forth motion. Now, um, I got so excited about sharing and getting you to go deeper that I did forget to put the glitter in uh, one of the paint pour, the last paint pour. So I'm going to take this opportunity to put glitter and just talk about some mixed media um, if you choose to incorporate it in your creation. So I am just going to again shift it so I can see it from different angles. So I'm pleased with it. Now if you um, are one of those people that like the edges to be a certain way. Now, I would encourage you to be okay with edges being kind of spontaneous because that is how life is. It's tidy when we want it to be tidy and it can be messy in other areas and that is okay. It's, it's, it's about being a part of the process and showcasing that process that when we work really hard and to do something, there are a lot of steps that go with it and it's not always clean. So. It's covered, the work surface covered. I'm pleased with it. I love, love, love how the colors kind of made like this back and forth, almost wave. And that is exactly what this technique is conducive to, making it look like waves. So I'm gonna showcase the glitter. I have dry glitter. Um, you can usually use paint glitter if you choose. 
and I'm gonna just put this back on. You can actually do it right from the shaker if you choose, or you can put it in your hands. So I'm gonna do both so you can see the technique is different. Okay, so the, th the thing you, you wanna know is you want it to be kind of controlled. You don't want it to be like, I'm just putting glitter over it for no reason. You want it to be kind of have a purpose. You don't want it to take an overpower the beauty of all the swirls of and the, the relaxing um, movement of the colors um, mixing because that is the nature and the beauty of this process of painting. So as you can see here, I know glitter is like one of those iridescent things. So I really like that I concentrated it in on one side. All right, so I'm adding a little touch and then this is what it looks like when I just add a little like tap from my shaker. It'll be like snow. So again, a little bit of that winter wonderland and I'm maybe concentrating a little bit on one side so it's not like overdone. So again, I'll show it one more time. So you can decide if it's something that you wanna do. Kind of enhances those cells. All right, so I'm gonna review, I'm gonna um, show my work surface one more time. Um, all the tech, all the tiles side by side, so you can decide which one is best if you're still indecisive. All right, so um, the first one is it's called the clean pour. It looks like spilled milk, a lot of linear lines. The second one is the dirty pour. There's a lot of marbling happening, a lot of mixed colors, um, very kind of one colored um, focused. Uh, the third one is what's called flip cup pour. The one I said was my favorite. Uh, it has a lot of cells and literally gravity just moves them and, and shakes them pretty much where it wants. It's very spontaneous. Um, it's like a tornado. <laughs> and then fourthly is the one I incorporated with glitter that is called waves. It literally has the movement of the waves. So those are the four techniques. I hope you included, uh, you enjoyed learning about four techniques, which are the, it was a bonus day today. Um, and um, I want you to just take a moment and decide, just make a decision on which one that you want to explore today. Um, I'm going to turn on just a little bit of um, a very lyrical artist that will kind of get us into a frame of mind that will help us really close and focus on what we're doing at the moment and not everything else that may be um, pulling for your, your attention. Um, yes, so thank you so much to, um, again, um, you can use a lot of different things. So again, I, I mentioned a stick you can use for mixed media and to kind of manipulate it. Um, what a great um, opportunity to use a plastic straw and you can blow it and kind of move it a little bit faster. That's really fun. You can incorporate glitter. I've actually even had people make snowflakes, like paper snowflakes, and they put it on their surface and then they do it over the top. Um, and then they kind of have the thickness of the paper underneath. So it's really like layered. There's so much you can do to explore. And I really encourage you to find that happy place, create something that's meaningful and reminiscent of this winter wonderland. So um, I'm gonna turn on some, what's called Lindsay Sterling. Um, and she is going to just um, bring us into the end of the, of the workshop. I know it's 3.30, um, but I want um, you to just kind of kind of get into a mindset so you can create if you haven't done so. Um, any last remarks, Maddie? Yeah, I was just going to thank you so much for sharing. And I was originally going to paint along um, with everyone, but I was sharing before this started my workstation. I didn't take a moment to pause. Um, I went from one <laughs> meeting to prepping for this, and I actually still paint all over. Um, and so this was just a great reminder for me to actually pause um, and take some time just to create. And so I will be doing that after this. My husband cleaned up my paint mess for me. Um, and so I am going to just take some time too after this to pause and disconnect. And it really doesn't matter what the finished product look, looks like, just connecting to my breath and kind of stilling my mind. Um, so hopefully everyone's journey wasn't as messy as mine, but it was definitely a much needed reminder to just take a break. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Absolutely. Well, um, I want to respect everybody's time. I'm going to encourage you.
you to um, turn on some happy music, whether you open your mind to a new artist, if she is new to you, Lindsay Sterling, and um, kind of get an opportunity to um, just finish out maybe your day to um, just um, find that happy space, finish up some time that is important for you. And uh, um, just, I hope you enjoyed the winter wonderland. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. All right.